Article 370 and you know, uh, making Jammu Kashmir a free state now? No, I'm not, I'm not used to stage to talk politics and, uh, in the sense of traditional sense of politics. I'm making an accusation about somebody. And somebody making an accusation about the other party. I'm not getting to that. I will take this opportunity to talk history. Because it's very important people sitting here should understand what history is. And especially with respect to Jammu and Kashmir, what actually happened? And what has happened over multiple years? And what especially happened when Article 370 got abrogated? And Jammu and Kashmir is a very special place because of the nature of its location. Uh, uh, what, we, what we call the geopolitics, geography and politics combined. It is located in an area where last 2000 years it was always a strategic vantage point. And many countries, many cultures, they all amalgamate, they are very close up. And Jammu and Kashmir being the entry point of Bharat, and if you look at the other Bharat also from that side, it is always a very important area for trading, uh, uh, for all the foreign powers to try to, uh, when they want to enter Bharat also, there is always a very important passes were there. And naturally, uh, every country will have a time, right to the British time, the Pakistani time. So we have to understand, we all know the history post-independence, 1947, August, we got independence. There were some princely states who were not willing to join because some states were ruled by kings, some princely states were in Nawabs. And somebody wanted to take an extra bit of time to understand where they really wanted to go because this partition itself was something that is forced on our countries, India and Pakistan, and something forced on you that look, this is the line, beyond this line there is India, beyond this line there is Pakistan. In that context, you have to understand Jammu and Kashmir. Even the, when the Maharaja of Kashmir, Arisin, was still taking some time to come to a conclusion. You had the tribal attack, the so called tribal attack, which Pakistan says, and we, we, we vociferously always said to the world stage. It is planned and orchestrated by the Pakistani army. We went to, went to the United Nations, January 1, 1948. Then some kind of a resolution was brought in. Then they wanted a plebiscite. So long story. Then you had a government there, which clearly felt that India should have two flags. The rest of India will have one flag. India will have two flags, meaning Jammu and Kashmir will have one flag. India will have two constitutions. The rest of the country will have a separate constitution. Jammu and Kashmir will have Parts of Constitution, Article 370 and Article 1, only two parts that is applicable in Jammu and Kashmir. When India will have a Prime Minister, Jammu and Kashmir will also have a Prime Minister, which you call the Chief Minister as a Prime Minister. So this was there for a long time. Then your parties like Praja Parishad Party, which wanted to have national flag in Jammu and Kashmir, the tricolor flag as the flag. And in 1951 elections, this particular party was disqualified. They couldn't fight the elections properly. Then the government came to power. So long story. So what I'm trying to say, madam, to come to this conclusion, why Article 370 need to go? It is important we have to understand what built it up in 1950 when Article 370 came for a short-term measure, and nobody had the courage to lift Article 370 for a long time. Finally, after 2019, August it has to be done. So I only request uh, the students here. It's a good time now to at least read the history of our country. I think when the gen uh, gentlemen before us, they were talking, they mentioned, the, especially the Chief Secretary when he was talking, he mentioned, it is important we understand the history of this country in a proper letter and spirit. Be it Jammu and Kashmir, be it Northeast, be it parts, including Hyderabad has got a long history of struggle. If you don't understand it, then possibly, where will the patriotism for us come? Then again, Jammu and Kashmir had a long story. Then uh, Chief Minister was dismissed. Arrested, he was sent to my state for 11 years in exile. The 1975 agreement happened between Indira Gandhiji and Sheikh Abdullah. The 87 mass reading of elections happened. Then probably the early signs of militancy started happening, which all led to this war. 1999, you, you have this Kargil war, which led to that a geopolitical tension, where one country, the democracy was changing, the army was coming in in Pakistan. The army wanted to show their power that they are the people who will control Pakistan. They wanted to show they really mean business, then it led to that. What is the, what is the result? 527 are brave soldiers, brave hearts, they lost their life. And a lot of geopolitical confusion, not adhering to a spirit, making sure the spirit of Jammu and Kashmir was killed at a particular point of time, because you had two constitution, two prime ministers, two flags, which in a civilized democratic country cannot coexist, and the absence of democracy Ricking of elections, banning of political parties, so everything led one after the other. 
There you had the mass exodus. Kashmir pundits they left. You saw the blood killings, and anybody who has seen the Kashmir fight story, they know that particular part of Kashmir's history. 99, 1989, early part of 90s, still about 1990 back. Then the 1999, what happened? For the whole world was watching what is happening in Jammu and Kashmir. Now, possibly in our generation, I think a lot of generation has waited, but especially this generation with a lot of pride can say, August 2019 when 370 was abrogated, we said. Right to a historical wrong. The Constitution of India that is applicable to the rest of the country is going to be applicable to the whole of Jammu and Kashmir in letter and spirit. And historical wrong that was committed in 1950, which was inserted in the Constitution again that the five day three seventy was removed, which made sure very small things: a woman born in Jammu and Kashmir, married outside Jammu and Kashmir, will have right to inherit the property. They are very small things. A person from outside Jammu and Kashmir entering Jammu and Kashmir has to get a pass to live in Jammu and Kashmir for a certain point of time. Again, a person who is in Jammu and Kashmir who belongs to the SCST community doesn't have India's SCST Act that is not applicable to that particular person. Small, small things for the general population, but big things for, for the people. Which one clear stroke of the abolition of Article 370? Very first time we can say last year, 2022-23. Close to one crore eighty-nine lakh people went to Jammu and Kashmir for the first time. Who don't belong to Jammu and Kashmir as tourists? They want to see the beauty of Dal Lake. They want to see what this particular state is all about. So Article three seventy abrogation has changed the complete nature of Jammu and Kashmir's geopolitics. Very first time you see the government in control. Very first time you don't see these stone buildings. Very first time you don't you feel the army are in better control because. In other words, the army can do their work, but at the civilian government, the, the people behind the army, their matters. You can't send our people in uniform to the arms way, in harm's way, and you cannot expect them to be cannon for us. As politicians are the powers to be in our country, you can't expect army to be the last resort of cannon for our going there, saving every time and coming. Now we can say, probably with a lot of certainty, 2019 August onwards, Jammu and Kashmir is entirely different. The geopolitics has changed. Very first time we sitting here, we sitting here can, can safely say, my uniform demand is not put in arm, arm, arms way unnecessary. Because as a country, they cannot pay for your sins. You cannot have thousands of troops there mobilized on the borders. They cannot pay for the sins of politicians here. They cannot pay for the sins of politicians' personal friendships in Kashmir in 1950 or 60s or 70s. Two different families in India having a particular friendship, and they cannot pay for their sins. So that is why it has changed the status quo. What was there for a long time, possibly the elections that is going to happen now in Kashmir and Jammu and Ladakh, that will usher in a free democracy where people will freely elect their own representatives. Once democracy comes in, then I think everything will be settled. We are also seeing the historically high number of. Investments going and companies getting started, employments coming up in a big way. I'm sure at least this generation, when they grow up, Jammu and Kashmir should be their number one choice of a tourist destination within our country. Instead of looking at Switzerland, looking at spending money there, since one crore eighteen and lakh people have chosen to go to Kashmir in one year, I'm sure when when these kids grow up and they have families and with their children, and they look at Jammu and Kashmir as a paradise on earth, truly it's a paradise on earth. Anybody who's gone to JNK will watch for it. And they will know the blood that all the soldiers and their families have paid for us over this many many years should be worth it. I am sure we should have made it happen. All of us have a role now. People like you, people like me, people sitting here. We all have a role to make it happen, which I am very sure will happen. Thank you. I would like to have the mango tree, but I don't like the mango roots. So I want all my trees to be cut off with their roots, but I want fruits. This is the kind of a situation in which we are today in this country. You are all the future torch bearers of this country. I sincerely appeal to you: please be different. Please don't be like dumb cattle, not knowing where to go, what to do. You are all brilliant children. You have got very high scores in various examinations. Please spend some time to read about our country's history. Please don't go by what others say. Very interestingly, those people 
who wanted a kind of a false narrative to spread in this country, they went about very systematically. They didn't try in a very unclear manner. What they did? They started from our roots. They started poisoning the tree from the roots. So what happens is today, a large number of intellectuals, so-called intellectuals, they started denigrating our own country. You have got political leaders who talk so lightly about the armed forces. You have got political leaders who don't understand even basics of Indian constitution. Look at the history of our country. Understand everything very carefully. You have today a democracy which is vibrant with so much of enthusiasm to perform. All of you, as you pass out of the portals of your college, many of you are going to get engaged with young startups. You are creating awareness, you are creating enlightenment in the society. But you should also have a thorough content in you about where you are coming from. If somebody were to ask you, can you please tell a few words about your father, about your mother, you should not say, I don't know. Just imagine, if somebody were to ask me, Mr. Subramanian, can you tell me something about your father, something about your mother, if I were to reply, sorry, I don't know. What is that kind of a state? It is called state of ignorance. That is where we are all today. Number of TV programs we see, when young people are asked something to, to tell something about Bhagavad Gita, they don't know. Something about August 15th, they don't know. Several of them don't know what is our national anthem. If you put a mic in front of them and make them to sing national anthem, I'm sure it will be a huge embarrassment. Now we are all Indians. We want to carry Indian passport. We don't know anything about our Indian flag. We don't know the sacrifices of our Indian Army, Indian Navy, Indian Air Force. Where are we going? In this context, Government of India has now brought in the new educational policy to enlarge our canvas, to understand. And I know my own colleagues in the Indian Administrative Service who are like this. They went to IIT, they went to IIM, they passed through the UPSC examination. Please tell us few words about Sri Ramayana, zero. About Mahabharata, big zero. Maybe because these days you have some movies coming about these uh, epics. You may tell something about that from those epics. Otherwise our knowledge is zero. If somebody were to ask me, can you say a few words about Arunachal Pradesh? I don't know. Have you travelled to Assam? No need. Have you been to Pondicherry? Not at all. We are zero about our own country. We have no interest to learn about our country. But we want to become great. How do you measure greatness today? It is in terms of the take-home salary. How much money I earn, I am that much great. Is that a philosophy at all? Please show me one statue made of any person who has earned a lot of money in any town, any village. Our society has never shown respect for people who have earned money. Our society has always given respect to people who stood a life of values, who have sacrificed something for the others. We have got people who sacrificed their wealth for the whole society. They have given away everything. That is the kind of society we are representing. That is the kind of a soil from where we are born. So we need to understand the context. We have to fix our goals. We need some objectives like this in life to march on. How long we live, nobody knows. But as long as we live, we must live 
with clarity in our mind about where are we going to travel to. I had to come to CMR college, I had to take that particular route. I had to put the GIS accordingly and come here. I can't feed Badrika College in my cell phone and hope to achieve my journey to CMR College. So please students, you are all our assets. You are our wealth. The wealth of the nation are all the college children today. You are the wealth. A very happy Corgan Vijay Divas to you all. This is a very pregnant moment. Firstly, it is a celebration. Secondly, we lost 527 heroes in the line of duty. Before I come to Kargil Prapo, just as been informed by the comparing, I stand before you all to represent National Cadet Go, our Director General, Air Commodore V. Madhusudan Reddy, he is on official duty in outstation. Unfortunately, he could not make it and it is my honor to grace the event on his behalf. As you all are aware, National Cadet Corps, popularly known as NCC, has Pan-India presence and it is the largest youth organization in the country. Since its inception in 1948, it has been doing the yeoman service. Presently, the NCC has a total of 17 directorates covering the length and breadth of the country. Our directorate, NCC directorate AP and Telangana, looks after both Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, and it is the second largest. It enrolls yearly a total of 130,000 NCC cadets. As you all are aware, NCC does a number of nation building activities. We, we catch the students at a very young age, nurture them to be future leaders. Like they will be volunteering in natural calamities. They also represent the country as junior ambassadors in the youth exchange programs. This is the cream of NCC who get selected in the Republic Day camp. Besides, we also inspire NCC cadets to join armed forces, central armed police force and also state police force. You would also see a number of distinguished personalities who have NCC background. Besides national building activities, we also encourage NCC cadets to be a good citizen by conducting social service and community development activities. The war which has been fought, it has been thanks to the sacrifice of the fallen heroes. So we also wanted the sacrifice of these fallen heroes is imbibed in this NCC cadet. And then when you start looking after, you will have a sense of attachment as well as you will be having responsibility to look after. And indirectly, you are also looking after your own environment through plantation drive. First of all, brothers and sisters, respected veterans, Veer Naris, distinguished guests. Uh, on this occasion, I remember uh, a quote uh, Vivekananda ji told, great Swami Vivekananda, the greatest glory in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. 
Those words echo the indomitable spirit of our Indian armed forces who has risen to the challenge to defend our country time and time and time again. When I was a young boy, I remember like uh, I have a little army background. My father was uh, from the EME uh, records. So there used to be a TV serial called Paramvir Chakra. Uh, and it was a ritual that every week we used to all sit and watch the TV serial. And I don't know like if people know what Paramvir Chakra is. It is the highest gallantry award an Indian army person can get. So it was so inspiring that each episode instilled a deep sense of respect and awe for the bravery of our soldiers. These stories deeply implement, inspired me and I also wanted to join the army. But God has other plans and I came into film industry. <laughs> uh, now, can you imagine what was going through when the Kargil was going on with the soldiers? Can you close your eyes and imagine the weather conditions, the cold, the what again, the terrain and the advantage that the enemy had and when the soldiers, our soldiers were down and the, arm, and the enemy was up, what was going through in their mind? So, the kind of spirit they had at that time, their fear was unparalleled with courage, their unwavering commitment and unshakable resolve. They stand, they stood still against and defended their motherland like nobody's business. And we should be ever thankful to them for doing that with so much fear and so much everything in that, but their love for their country was so much that they were not bothered about anything, but only saving their country. As a cinematographer, I have the privilege of capturing stories that touch the heart, but no frame, no shot, no scene can match the bravery and the sacrifice the soldiers, our soldiers gave at the war front in Kargil, or not only Kargil, any war. And thanks to them that we are so peacefully sitting here, enjoying our peace and enjoying whatever we want to do. We should be ever thankful to them and as sir told, we should never forget our history and the people are defending us on the borders. And I extend a deep respect to the Veer Naris and families of our brave matter, martyrs. Your strength, courage and the resilience uphold the spirit of the nation. Your sacrifice is not forgotten and they live in the heart of every Indian who are all present here. I urge you to draw inspiration from the stories of our heroes. Let their courage ignite a fire within you to pursue your dreams, overcome your challenges and contribute to our nation and with utmost dedication. The future of our country lies in your hands. Do you think it lies in your hands? Yes, right? So. Please, you have a great country which has a great legacy. It is now in your hand to, hand to take it forward. And let us pledge to upload the unity, integrity and sovereignty of our great nation as all the soldiers did. We are one nation united by our diversity and strengthened by our differences. Let us march together inspired by the courage of our heroes and create a bright future for our country. Jai Hind. Thank you. Yeah! 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 Yeah!